Hi, so in these few videos I'm going to show you how you can automate your home using a Raspberry Pi, MQTT and some really simple hardware. Okay, so first off you need to get the image put on the Raspberry Pi SD card. It's best off to look at the Raspberry Pi instructions for this, um, it can take quite a long time. These are the commands that I would use on Linux anyway. After that, um, unplug the SD card, plug it back in and click on the boot drive that appears. Then create a file called SSH. Um, there should be no extension on it at all, so it shouldn't be a text file or anything. You don't have to put anything in it, you just need the SSH file. You need to create another file then called um, wpasupplicant.conf. And in that, you put the following information, which contains um, all that's needed to connect to the Wi Fi network. This is what you'll need on the Raspberry Pi 3 or the Pi 0W um, to make things work properly. You also need to make sure that your line endings are in Unix format, in which case you'll need something like Notepad++ if you're on Windows. Now simply eject the SD card and swap it over to a Raspberry Pi. Um, plug the Raspberry Pi into power and wait a minute or so for it to boot. Now you need to connect via SSH. If you're on Windows, you'll need to install something called PuTTY, but on Linux or Mac OS, you just run the following command. When you're prompted, just say yes. I'd connected to another Raspberry Pi in the past, so I'm being prompted twice. The password that you enter is raspberry, all lowercase, no spaces, no nothing. Um, and then you should connect to the Raspberry Pi. Now enter sudo raspberry config. This will allow you to set up the Raspberry Pi in a bit more detail. Um, you can do things like set the use of password and the hostname. But what you want to do is to go to advanced and expand file system. Once you've done that, um, just use the arrow keys and the, the right arrow and enter to finish and choose to reboot the, the device. Boot will take a few seconds, but during that time you just want to close the existing window you had open, open a new one and um, get prepared to SSH back in again. Unless you change it, it'll be the same password of Raspberry. When you're connected this time, you want to run sudo apt-get update. This will update the list of available software so that when you install things it will be able to find the latest files. I've sped this up a little bit because it can take a while. Now you need to enter the following command. This will install the MQTT server as well as some um, tools for accessing Bluetooth, which you don't need at the moment but uh, you will do if you want to do anything with PuckJS in the future. So again, I've sped this up quite a lot because it can take quite a few minutes, especially on a Raspberry Pi Zero. Finally, you need to enter this command, which you'll want to copy and paste. This one will install the absolute latest um, Node-RED and Node.js and everything it needs. And this one does take a really long time to do. Next, you want to type this to start the Node-RED service. This will actually create some directories as well, which you'll need for the next step, which is to add the Node-RED user interface library, which will give us kind of some nice graphs and buttons and things. Um, and again, this one can take a few minutes too, so I've sped this up in the video. Now you've added the UI framework, you want to stop the Node-RED service and then start it again. Um, this can take a few minutes, but it will cause it to load up the user interface so that when you actually go to it next, you'll be able to use it properly. Next step is to enable the service, and this will make it so that every time you start the Raspberry Pi in future, the Node.js service will automatically be loaded and you'll be able to access it. So to use it, go to Raspberry Pi colon 1880, and um, the Node-RED interface should be available there. There are loads of blocks to choose from, but the first one we're going to choose is the MQTT Publish block. That's the one with the connection on the left hand side. Next we'll use an inject block that lets us file for an event and we'll just connect them together. The next step is to use an MQTT server and it's as easy as clicking edit, entering the text localhost and clicking add. And finally we need to choose which path we're actually going to publish to with the topic. Um, and for this we're just going to use hello. So do that, click done and then click deploy. And after a few seconds, your flow should be usable. You'll see the little connected light and it'll undim. To test it, let's use a command line app called Mosquito Sub. This will let us subscribe to a whole bunch of MQTT events and will allow us to see exactly what's going on. It's as easy as just entering the host you want to connect to, the topic you want to subscribe to, and um, the minus V option says for both, which will just give us a little bit more information about the message, like what topic it's on. 
Once it's set up, it's as easy as clicking the inject button, which will send a timestamp, which will then be printed out by the um, command line application. But you can go the other way as well. You can drag on an MQTT subscriber node and maybe a debug node to see what's going on. Connect the two together and choose what you want the MQTT node to subscribe to. We'll just use slash testing. Once you've set all that up, you can use the mosquito pub command line application to send an MQTT message, which will then hopefully appear in the debug log. We can do better than that though. We can use the node red UI, which we installed previously, to create a graph of the data that we're receiving on a specific MQTT topic. So for now, I'll rename the MQTT topic to slash graph, and then we'll pull on a chart node. All you need to do after that is to create a new UI tab to put the chart on which you can do just by clicking in the top box. After that's done, click deploy and you're ready to go. All you need to do then is go to the URL Raspberry Pi 1880 forward slash UI in the web browser. If we now go back to the Mosquito pub command line tool, we can publish a message to the MQTT slash graph topic. Um, and if we just change it to a number and we move the number between various different points, we'll be able to see that appearing in the graph. So now we've got all this set up, the next step is really to control some real hardware with it, and I will cover that in the next few videos. If you found this interesting, please click like and subscribe. I will be trying to produce new videos every week.